Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the first video of 2021. It is the recording of the winter trellis hat. And this is Yarnspirations free pattern of course. Highly textured and highly requested on our homepage of the crochetcrowd.com. There's a tutorial request form where you can fill out and this has actually been filled out several times for people to do it. And Yarnspirations uh, last September also suggested that I film this. So what I did last night is that I worked on the project. But and it is beautiful it is highly textured it is wonderful it doesn't take as much yarn as I expected it would be and because you have the different layers here you're going to notice that it's double thickness here at least at the top crown area. So when we go to work on it we're gonna be working on it this way and then working our way to this particular section. So this here is uh, actually uh, Red Heart Super Saver so you could use that. I'm gonna have a little fun today and I'm gonna use some Colorscape yarn Red Heart Colorscape to have it change color see what happens. I don't know if it's gonna work out either way it's a great donation hat anyway for the charity box. So I want you to pay attention to page number three. <laughs> Let's talk about this page. So page number three is the magical page. This is the entire hat graphed out. So this is the very top. This little swiggy diggy thing here is an adjustable ring. It's called a magic ring. I will demonstrate that as well. So you'll notice that it's nice and tight here on the top of the hat. If you use a chain two, you'll end up with the space at the top that you can sew shut just in case that is just something that's too hard for you. So we're going to be doing that today and then we're just gonna be going around. Now during today's tutorial, I had a speed bump right in actually in <laughs> round number three and I literally got all the way here and I had a frog all the way back because I had miscounted in number three and therefore I created this extra ridge that I didn't know what to do with and I couldn't fix once I got up here. So we're gonna wanna pay attention to that as well. So let's talk a little bit on this diagram about when we do things like this. So when we stretch over and we're starting to replace stitches. So I'm gonna take you up here in just a second. So this is an older crochet diagram where the X stitches here equal a single crochet. Usually it's a plus sign. So if that's uh, fooling you at all, don't let it fool you. It, it is the way it is. So what I want you to recognize is that when you have things like this, see how it comes over and comes around. It's a front post double crochet. We have to keep in mind that when that happens, it leaves an empty stitch underneath. You see like this? So there's a, a single crochet here and there's nothing here, but it's technically this double crochet that's coming in to make up that. So what you have to be conscious when you're working on this particular concept when you start crisscrossing like this or going across and using up stitches the stitch count isn't actually changing at all but what you're doing is you're filling in the spaces with these stitches. So for example the plus sign here the, uh, the X the single crochet technically this stitch here is leaning over towards it and then a single crochet is going into here. So you're going to want to be pushing stitches aside and it's the hardest thing to be able to teach here on camera when that happens. In round number five for example when we go here you're going to single crochet in this stitch here but then you're also going to do a front post double crochet as well. So each one of those stitches is gonna happen this way. So all you just gotta do is just shift these stitches aside in order to get that to work and what we're doing is we're doing the expansion. Now this hat has been provided in two sizes. So you'll see a 20 and a 24 inch. So you wanna pay attention to that because you wanna measure your own head and choose the sides that you're gonna wanna do. I'd almost probably recommend that you do a gauge a swatch for this particular one as well uh, just to make sure that you're getting it uh, right and it's going to be able to match. So I used a six millimeter size J crochet hook instead and I still have a hat that fits beautifully but I think I'm a little loose but don't tell anybody that. So this is my very long intro. Um, I really wanna make sure that you're getting it uh, right. There is also a stitch key diagram here. So everything that you see here actually has all the symbols so that you can follow that as well. And if you're not sure what those symbols mean, go back to page number one and then you can find front post double crochet, front post decrease and etc. and you'll find all of that information. So I think that's enough jibber jabber. Let's get at it. Let's start with your larger hook, a six and a half millimeter size K. I am using a six, a, or a six millimeter size J. That's just because I'm special. <laughs> so let's start off with the magic ring and we'll get you going right now. So we're going to begin with an adjustable ring. It's called a magic ring as well. You will need a tapestry needle for the end of this round that we're about to do. So what I want you to do is lay it in your hand like this. Okay, and then just using two fingers and take the other strand that's leading towards the yarn ball and go up over top. We actually have slower videos available on this. This is an intermediate level project. So all you're just gonna do is scoop your, your larger hook, scoop it and pick it off. 
that and just slide out your fingers. And now when you go to crochet, you're going to crochet so that you're going over top of these two strands right here. So to begin, you're going to chain a total of two. So one and two. And that is going to be your first stitch. So let's talk about the stitch uh, sizes because this is where it changes if you're doing one size or the other. For the smaller size hat, it's 20 to 22 inches and that is for the um, circumference of the hat. And if you're gonna do the larger size, it's 22 to 24 inches. So the smaller size that we are going to do, this is considered one double crochet already. So what we have to do is that if you're doing the smaller size, I want you to put an additional six double crochet into that ring. So when you go in, wrap into the ring, go over the two strands and double crochet. For the larger size, you need to do seven. Okay, so at the end of this with the chain two, you will either be left with seven double crochets for the smaller size or eight for the larger size. So continue to double crochet in the size that you would like to do and this is the only time that there is a size difference and it's being established right here on the top of the hat. So for me, I'm doing the smaller size. So with this chain two that I started with, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the smaller size. So it's gonna be eight if you're doing the larger size. Pull this loop up and just let it come out of your hands and take the strand that you were crocheting over top of and pull it tight. Now, put this back on for a second and I want you to slip stitch to the beginning chain two but you're not quite done, there's something more. So I want you to pull this loop back up and this strand that we pulled tight, it's gonna come out. So you're going to want to take your tapestry needle at this time and this is the best way to really close off the top of a hat. So even if it has a chain information at, on the top of a hat, if you do a magic ring instead, you can never go wrong. So people email all the time, can I do a magic ring instead? Yeah, you don't need to ask me, that's just a given. Okay, so exercise and try it. A lot of people I think just want confirmation but the reality is just try it. Nobody's watching you. <laughs> okay, so I just woven in my end three times back and forth without really saying much about it and now I can safely trim that and it should never fall out on you. So now you're going to put this back on. Round number one is complete and we're now gonna start with round number two next. In round number two, you're going to just chain up loosely one chain. That doesn't count as a stitch at all. And what you have to do is that you have to do a front post double crochet twice around each of the stitches that are here. Now because I'm doing the smaller version, there's seven for me to do. If you're doing the larger version, there will be eight. And so you're just gonna go in and just grab the first one which will be a chain two. And you're just gonna come from the front and do a front post double crochet twice on the same stitch. If you're not sure, just peel it back. So my goal at the end of this one here, because I'm doing the smaller size, I should see a total of seven groups of these two double crochets and for the larger size, you will see a total of eight. Now you're going to notice that as we get bigger in this thing is that once we just get into the next round, you're gonna notice that the repeat pattern is the same regardless of what size you're doing. So it doesn't matter to me to explain to you um, the bigger or smaller because it's just a repeat pattern going forward. So please just do two double crochet, front post double crochet around each of the posts going around. Okay, I just counted just to verify and I have seven groups of two. The chain one that we had doesn't count as a stitch and you are going to slip stitch to the top of the first front post double crochet and that will close it in nicely. So we're now going to move on to round number three. This is a critical round so make sure that you are getting this off to being right and we're gonna begin that next. In round number three, you're going to chain one. Now the mistake I did, I told you that I had a frog halfway back and the reason for it, see this chain one here, I thought that was a stitch. So I included that in my, my numbers and therefore I was completely wrong. So what I need to do is make sure I don't do that chain one and just start with the very first one and I'm going to put two double crochet into each of, uh, two front post double crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. So we're essentially gonna be doubling our round at this point. So go to the next one, put two into that one. 
I think this hat's gonna be really interesting with the color change too. Okay, so then you go to the next one. So the first one's kinda like in the backward. Just kinda pick it out and peel it forward and put two into that one and then etc. So put two front post double crochets into each of the stitches going around and I would do a, a double check for your counts and those information is available on the pattern if you need it. When I came up all the way around I verified that I have 28 double crochets. That is for the smaller size and then if you are doing the larger size there should be 32 and when I come around just slip stitch to the top of the first front post double crochet. And let's move on to round number four in just a moment. So from here on in both of the sizes are going to always be the same. There's just gonna be a different uh, count as you're going around but the repeat is still the same so it will work out. So starting with round number four you're going to just chain up one and then for, forget that chain one that's in behind here. That's not a stitch. Just start with your first front post double crochet that you're right over top of. And in round number four one, uh, one each front post double crochet on each stitch going all the way around and you will see this will dramatically um, pick up and be awesome. So one front post double crochet around each stitch going around. So coming around to the end of number four I'm just slip stitching to the top of the first front post double crochet. Let's move on to round number five and now you see that it's all solid now. We're going to start dividing it off so it looks like it's more ribbing at the top of the hat or the top of the crown right now. Let's move on to round number five. So in round number five we have to do two things for every stitch going all the way around. So you're going to just chain loosely, just chain one. In the first front post double crochet that you're attached to I need you to single crochet first and then around the same post front post double crochet. And what this is doing it's creating a space in between each one of these um, lines that you will see. So in the very next stitch single crochet first and then front post double crochet. So you're doing an expansion but you're also creating that space that you will see that these fingers will kind of like start dividing off. So single crochet the next one, then front post, double crochet the same one and etc. So single crochet and then front post double crochet and essentially everything has two stitches and you will see the lines will start dividing off. So I'm coming up to the end of number five I will finish and this is a front post double crochet. Just may, it makes sense because it was a single first and then a front post double into the same. So then just slip stitch here to the single crochet. So don't go to that front post double go right to the single crochet. Now we're going to continue now to rounds number six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven. It's exactly uh, similar to this and what I'm going to show you then is round number six and then you'll continue on to all the way to eleven on your own. So let's begin number six all the way through eleven. I'm just going to demonstrate and then you can do the rest on your own here and I'll see you at the end of number eleven. So you're going to chain up one. Now you've attached to a single crochet so you're gonna keep that as a single crochet and the next stitch is a front post double. So you'll keep that as a front post double on its own. So you're no longer expanding. This is it. So the next one is a single. So you'll put a single in there and then the next one is a front post double. So you'll keep that as a front post double. So essentially you're matching the stitch to stitch. So you don't really have to think. You just have to see what's there and just duplicate it. Okay so no expansion. So it's either a single or it's a front post double crochet. Now when you get all the way around you're going to um, slip stitch to the top of the uh, to the single crochet. You'll chain up one and then start all over again. So if it's a single keep it a single. If it's a front post keep it a front post and this is round number six. So what I want you to do is round number six all the way through eleven. I'm just gonna turn on my music and I'll be back in just a few seconds from now. I'll have that done but in real time it'll just take me a bit of time to get there and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I've now just finished up to round number eleven. So I'm gonna take you to the diagram. You're going to notice where there's slip stitching. It's just a little bit of an extra space so if you see that don't panic. It is part of the pattern so don't worry about that. The inside looks awesome too and this I love the colors. So let's uh, take you back to the diagram and now we're gonna start some fancy work um, being able to start separating these uh, ribs that you see to form the pattern that you see in the hat. I'm now officially on round number 12. So I'm going to chain up one and we're going to put in a single crochet in the first single crochet and then this stitch here there will be a single crochet here and then we're going to do a front post double crochet around the same post below. We're going to skip this one here because this double crochet that we just put in there is counting as that. So it'll appear that we're skipping it 
And then the next one is a front post double crochet around this one. There's a single crochet in the next one and then a front post double crochet in the next one. We're skipping this one and that's because we're gonna be doing this front post double crochet around this one and then a double crochet or sorry a single crochet here. So if you look at it from the perspective of like this you can see each one of the sections are working itself out. Okay, so that's something that you can decide for yourself on how you would like it to work. The stitch counts are not changing at all. The difference is, is that we're using these front posts that you see in order to fill those in to create those lines to go in different directions. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's do round number 12. So let's do this. I'll do two sections here on camera with you. I'll get you started on the first section and then we'll do another repeat just to make sure you get it. So we're going to begin and we're going to chain a total of one. And we're going to single crochet in the same one that you did the slip stitch with. And then the next one here is that you're going to single crochet in the top of this front post double crochet. But you're not done. You're gonna front post double crochet around that same one. And this will cause that one to lean over top of the next stitch. So it appears that you're skipping it but in actual fact this extra stitch that you just did counts as that. You're going to come to the next front post double crochet and you'll make that as a front post double crochet. You'll come into the next one for a single crochet and then the next one as a front post double crochet. Now the, this is the end of the one section so we're just gonna finish it off. So you skip apparently the next one. Okay it appears that you are but you're actually doing a front post double crochet around the next rib. And then in the same one you have to kind of shift it forward to get access to it. So around the same one you're going to single crochet there. And then the next one is one single crochet by itself and that's the end of the section. So you can see that these just turned inward. Okay so it's coming in. So let's do another section together. So you're gonna single crochet the next one and then front post double crochet the same one. Which counts as the next stitch that you have. So you're gonna immediately jump to the next post and front post double crochet it. Do the single crochet. Do the next front post double crochet. And now you're gonna skip the next one and you're just gonna front post double crochet in this next one here. And then just lean it forward and get access to it and single crochet in the same one in behind. And then you'll single crochet the next one and then begin that all over. So you will see that each one of these sections of four ends up then starting to work together like you see within the model. So please do this all the way around. So I'm coming up near to the end and I literally have to watch this last one. So I'm just coming in here and I need to put in my single crochet here that's on top of that last front post double crochet. And when we started we have two in a row. So that means that this is one two and three. Remember that there was three single crochets that were separating each one of these sections. So attach or slip stitch to the beginning single crochet so that you only have three. So now you will be able to physically see that there's sections here. Okay and there's uh, and there's sections that it consists of four of these. And so we're now going to move on to number 13 but let me take you back to the diagram and let's go there for now. So we begin number 13. I just wanted to point out that there's actually a mistake on here but on you'll see it in just a moment. So number 13 you're going to chain up one and you'll put uh, two single crochets in a row. Okay you see those. The next one will be a single crochet and then a front post double crochet into the same stitch. This here is a front post double crochet and it's going around this post and this post so you'll skip that single crochet. See this symbol? It looks backwards. So this here is just a reflection I think the designer has done but this is not a back post. This is still a front post. Okay so ignore what side this is on. So technically it should be on the other side. So it should be like that. Okay so do that. So it's a front post double crochet around that one and then a single on top of the same one. Then you'll have three singles in a row and then here. So the way that I remember it is that when I do this kind of stuff I write the number five. I can see that there's five single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five and then I just make sure that I just kind of follow that same idea. So as I'm working up here I will see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'll write down that there's seven there and then the next one has five and etc. So it helps me to be able to count the number of single crochets in between each one of these um, sections. Let's begin number 13. 
So let's begin number 13. We're going to chain up one and the first two in a row starting with the first one is single crochets and now the next one here is a front post double. You can see it. So you're gonna put in a single crochet first and then front post double crochet that one as well. Okay and that counts as the next one that it's sitting over top of and so see these two middle ones. So it's a section that's in the middle. You're going to just wrap your hook and go pick up the next one and this one and you'll do that. So a front post double crochet around those two of those and then you'll do a front post double crochet around the last one of this section. So it's really pulling it in and in that same last one you have to single crochet there to keep the balance. Remember that I wrote the number five so that's gonna be considered one and then two, three, four, five and that takes you right to the top of the next front post double which is where you're going to front post double again. So you'll add that same stitch to that or add that stitch to that same stitch. The next one you're gonna put the two middles together. So grab in the first one and then the second one. Put those together and then grabbing the next one. And then in that last one you have to just single in there in the same one. So one, two, three, four, and five and that takes exactly where you need to be and then you'll just continue to follow that same idea. So you can see how this is coming together. So at the end of number 13 I am just putting a single crochet over top of the last one that's here and then you have one single crochet that's left. Okay so just count it like this. So you have one that went over top. So one, two and then this side of this slip stitch is uh, three, four and five. So therefore it should be good to go. So that just keep an eye on those stitch counts as you go. So just join it and let's begin number 14. As we begin number 14 you're going to chain up one and then there will be a total of three single crochets by itself. The next one is gonna have a single crochet and then it's going to be sharing a, a actual one together. So you're going to um, put in three front post double crochet together. So it's gonna go around this stitch, this stitch and this stitch. Once that's done you'll single crochet into the same stitch here and that's considered one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then the seventh one you'll do that uh, three front post double crochet together sharing this one, this one and this one and then you'll single into the same one as the last and it's a nice easy round. This is number 14. To begin number 14 you're gonna chain up one and there's gonna be four single crochets in a row. So one, two, three and this is the fourth one which is on top of the first front post double crochet. So we're going to do the front post double crochet three together. So it's gonna be this one, this one and this one that we're gonna collect. So wrap going into the first one, pull through, pull through two and hold and then do and then hold that. So just wrap going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold and then go into the next one, wrap going into that one, pull through, pull through two and hold. Once you see four loops on the hook you're done. So pull through all four and the very last one that you put in there's a single crochet directly on the same one behind it and so that's considered one of seven. So let's count those out. So one and keep moving, two, three, four, five, six and seven takes you to the next front post double crochet that you have. So you're gonna double uh, front post double crochet three together. So do that one, do the next one and do the third one. Once you see four loops pull through all those and the single crochet is on the same one as the last one and so then you'll count out seven from there and begin again and you'll see how it's gonna be picking up. When you come to the end of this round don't forget that you still have the single crochet that is behind this first one here. So you have that one plus you have two more left. So this is considered, let's do the counting just so you get it. So you have the one behind. So one, two, three and then you have the ones on the other side of the slips. So four, five, six and seven. Okay so let's just join this now and let's go back to the chart and let's do round number 15. So round number 15 we're going to chain up one and we're gonna put three single crochets in a row. This one will be a front post double crochet around this grouping of three 
and then there will be a single crochet in the middle one of the actual stitch itself and then there will be another front post double crochet around this grouping of three. You then have five single crochets in a row and then again a front post double crochet around this group, a single crochet in there and then a front post double crochet around the same group. This is round number 15. Let's give this a whack. Let's begin number 15. So you're gonna chain up one and you'll put three single crochets in a row starting with the first one. So one, two, and three. Now you're going to go in the front post double crochet is gonna be counting as this one. So you're gonna wrap the hook and go around all of those. So that grouping of three, pull through, pull through two and two back up. Now the next single crochet is in the top of this one. So it's right behind it. And now the next front post double crochet is around that same grouping of three. Okay, so you have to keep in mind that when you peel this back the next stitch that is empty that's the same stitch as this. So just consider that. So the next one here, so you're gonna do five in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five. And you should be ending one stitch before you get to this group. So that one should be empty. So you're gonna do a front post double crochet around the group. Single crochet in the top of the group and then a front post double crochet around the same group again. And then that counts as the next empty stitch in behind. So just go to the next one and do the next five in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five and that should take you to the one just before this one. So this should be empty and then the group. Do this all the way around. This is round number 15. When you get back around, I've just done this grouping. So there was a front post double and then a single on the top and then a front post double. So that counts as the one that it's sitting there. So then you just have two left. So one and two and if you're not sure that's one and two and then after the slip stitch is three, four, and five. So then you're just going to slip stitch to the top. I'm trying to make sure these counts stay um, easier for you to understand. So let's do number 16 next. Let's do number 16, chain up one and I don't need to take you to the chart because all it is is one single crochet in each stitch going all the way around and I'll see you at the end of number 16. So we're just taking a quick holiday here and just apply one single crochet so that it gives us a bit of spacing to work with for the next round number 17. So let's do, let's do 16 first. When you get to the end of number 16, just slip stitch to the first one and then you're good to go. Let's go to number 17. I am going to show you an alternative to number 17. So hopefully that it will make sense for you. So let's begin number 17 in just a second. In number 17 we're going to do these trebles that are going to reach all the way over in order to create this line. I am going to show you an alternative. I think that this beginning one should be the same and I think we should do those at the same time instead of waiting to come back. I created an extra stitch when I did it on my own so I'm gonna show you how to uh, do these both at the same time and then we're gonna do seven single crochets in a row and then see how they're done at the same time. That's what I think we should do right here in the very beginning to make our lives a little bit easier. So if you prefer as per the instruction it says to chain one and then just go over here and then a single crochet seven and then just do these two and then when you get back all the way it says to do this last but I'm gonna suggest that we do it right off the hop and then begin to, to work on it that way. So you can decide what's gonna work for you the best. Let's do number 17. So let's do number 17. We're gonna chain one and instead of just waiting to do like I suggested I'm suggesting that we do that front post uh, treble two together at right off the hop. So you're gonna wrap the hook twice and you're gonna come to this front post double crochet that's here and you're just gonna come back and pick it up and pull through two and then pull through two and two but do not finish it. So make sure that you just end up with two loops on your hook. Then you're going to do the other one over here. So wrap twice and then do the front post double crochet that's leaning over towards this stitch and pull through two and two and hold and once you have all three loops pull through all three. I will show this to you again. So now you have that done. You're just gonna reach in behind. So the one that it's coming out of is already done. So you're gonna come into the next one and you're gonna do seven in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six 
and seven and once you have that done you're going to do the next one. So the next one here is roughly about the center point of one of these. So you're gonna wrap the hook twice and you're gonna come back to the one that you just passed and then you're gonna wrap twice and go to the next one that is coming up in the future and then pull through all three. So that counts as the next one that it's in line with. So then you're gonna come to the second one over and begin again. So you can see that it's roughly in the middle. So one is done, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So then you come back to the one that you passed and then you go forward to the one that you is coming in the future and put those together and then that counts as the next one that is in line. So then you start your seven from the next one after that. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 17. So I'm coming all the way around and so then this is the last one. So because I did the first one already, it's already there. So I've just done my seven in a row and I'm going to slip stitch to the top of the first one that's been like this and therefore you're good to go. And so this was the end of round number 17. Let's go on to round number 18 next. Round number 18, just simply chain up one and do one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. Nothing to worry about here. One single in each and just join to the top of the first single crochet and then we'll begin number 18, sorry, <laughs> round number 19 next. Once you come to the end of round number 18, you're just gonna slip stitch and let's begin round number 19. We're gonna do some more fun work of overlaying next. In round number 19, we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do a front post double crochet around the two that are coming together. So you'll see that happening. Do you see those? It looks like that. So then you have three single crochets in a row and then this is a front post uh, puff stitch. So you're just gonna come down into this stitch. It's just eye it up and come straight down. So if you look at this, straight down and you're going to apply all of this in this stitch here and it's going to provide that puff. Then you have three in a row and then it's a front post double crochet. Again, wrapping around both of these here and then three in a row and then a puff stitch. Let's continue this into round number 19. So let's begin number 19. You're going to chain one loosely and you're gonna do a front post double crochet around the two that are here. So just scooping up underneath both of them and a front post double crochet. So that counts as the first one that it's coming out of. So you're gonna put three single crochets in a row. So one, two, and three and this will take you approximately straight up. Do You see that? So it's gonna be a puff stitch. So you're gonna wrap the hook and you're gonna come into this one here but one down. Okay and it's roughly in the middle so just going into one side and the other and pull through. You wanna do that a total of four times so that you end up with a whack on the hook. A whack means a lot. So wrap and into the same one. So this is twice and wrap same one. This is three times and then wrap same one four times. So you end up with a total of nine loops on here. So yarn over, pull through all nine and chain one to lock it. That chain one is not a stitch in the future so don't count that as a stitch. But it is a stitch that is in front of here so you're gonna skip that one and put three in a row. So you do one, two, and three. And then the next one is straight on down with a front post double crochet around both of those that are coming together. So that's skipping that next one that is in directly in behind it. So one, two, three and then a front post puff stitch coming down. So just look at the center here. You can always fake things if you have to, right? So you wanna do that a total of four times and then pull through all of it and then chain one to lock it and then that counts as the next one that it's in front of so then three in a row, so one, two, three and then coming straight down again. So that's what I want you to do all the way around. So you can see this is kind of really turning out pretty cool now. So I'm now coming to the end of this round and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the first front post double crochet and now you can see these are popping out really quite nicely. Let's move on to the next round. It's a nice easy round, just one single crochet in each stitch. Let's review that in a second. Round number 20 is just chain up one and apply one single crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. Careful of those puff stitches 
that chain one that locked it which is right here is not a stitch. It's just a lock. So jump right over it and continue along as you're going along your path. Let's uh, do this for uh, round number 20. I'll see you back here in a second. So coming up to the end of round number 20 and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the first one that we started with. Now we're going to start preparing now for the uh, ribbing of the actual brim but we still have to get that ready and let's take you back to the diagram now. In number 21 we're going to start doing the foundation work in order to start branching off to the ribbing eventually. So right here when we start number 21 we're going to do a front post double crochet around the one that's two rows below and then there's a total of seven days and then a front post double crochet around the existing one and then seven and etc. So you'll see a big pocket of space opening up here and then in the next rounds we, we uh, start then beginning to divide off then the ribbing right to the brim. So let's begin number 21. Just chain up one. I've already done it and I'm going to do a front post double crochet around the same one below like that and then all we just have to do that counts as the first one coming out of and we are just going to single crochet the next seven in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and that will take you to the next front post double crochet down here which counts as the one that is sitting in front of and then the next seven and then front post double crochet down so the lines will start going downward. So please do that all the way around. Coming up to the end of number 21 and I've just come to the last one and I am going to then just slip stitch to the top of the first front post double crochet. So now you can see it really kind of cool right? So let's begin number 22. In number 22 we're going to start dividing off then for the first part of the ribbing and then you're going to notice that we'll do the ribbing in between coming up after. So we're going to start off and we're going to chain up one and do one single crochet in the first one here and then we're going to do a front post double crochet around the same post here which will count as the stitch. Then you have five in a row and then you're going to reach over and do the first one right here, the front post double crochet. You'll single crochet in the same one and then come back when you do the next one front post double crochet and then five. Please do this all the way around. We're going to start with round number 22 in just a moment. Let's begin round number 22. We're going to chain up one and do a single crochet in the first one and that's sitting right above that first front post double crochet and then you are going to front post double crochet that next one which will count as the next stitch that it's gonna sit in front of. So just skipping that one there and do the next five in a row. So one, two, three, four and five and then just reach on over to this post and do that post which counts as the stitch that it's gonna sit in front of and then you'll single crochet right in the top of that post and then front post double crochet again that post and that counts as the next one it will sit in front of and then do the next five after that. So one, two, three, four, five, and then do your post, do the one on the top of the post and do the front post again. Okay, skipping that first one that it's gonna sit in front of and do the next five in a row. Please do all this <laughs> all the way around. When you get all the way around in that the last stitch here is actually the front post double crochet around the first one that you started with and then you attach to the beginning single crochet that you started with. Okay, so it looks like that. Let's start the next round. Let's move on. In round number 23 we are just gonna do one single crochet in each and then after that it's gonna be ribbing for one, two, three and four rounds and then we're going to finish the final two. Let's begin number 23, one single crochet in each. Let's begin 23, just chain up one and do one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. I'll see you at the end of number 23 in just a moment. So I'm just coming all the way around and just slip stitch and let's start doing some ribbing next. So let's go back to the diagram once again. So now we're going to do round number 24. We're gonna chain up one and we'll do one single crochet here. See how these two are branched off? We're going to do a front post double crochet around the first one here and then a single and then we're going to do a front post double crochet around this single crochet here and then a single and then a front post double crochet around this single here. So you just gotta remember that there's gonna be a single crochet in between each one of these ribbing and then we're eventually gonna hit this rib again. So you're just gonna come straight in, grab the rib itself, 
single crochet, grab the rib itself and then just start working. So this is going to establish our ribbing right to the end now. So let's begin round number 24, 24. Let's begin round number 24. You're gonna chain up one and do a single crochet in the first one and then we're gonna do the front post double crochet around the other one that's sitting there. Okay, it's where they branched off. So that counts as the one that it's sitting in front of. So you'll single crochet the next one and then you're going to come and skip this one down here and go to the second and front post double crochet around that single crochet. So that counts as the one that's sitting in front of. So single crochet the next and then come on down. So it's every other stitch. So if you're not sure just skip one and go to the next and then single crochet and if you're watching this one here is next. So it's already there. So you just keep in that one there. Single crochet and then coming to the next one. Okay and then once you get that done just start jumping on down to fill in those spaces to make those ribs. It's not a hard concept actually. It's pretty, it's a lot more simpler than I expected. Okay so there essentially when you look at it there's two ribs that are in between each one of these sections that divide off. So if that helps you to know that, it's good to know. So continue this all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming all the way around. I'm just getting all my ribs established and if this is the last one that's going in so I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So let's move on now to round number 25. So I'm gonna have you do rounds number 25, 26 and 27 on your own. So just chain up one, put a single crochet where it's a single crochet. If there is a front post double crochet, continue to make it a front post double crochet and you'll be doing that all the way around at this point. So that's all there is to this one. So do rounds number 25, 26 and 27 and I'll see you at the end of that round. So let me just get you started. So 25 just chain up one. You're sitting on top of a single so keep it a single and if there's a front post double then keep it a front post double. And the next one is a single and then the next one is a front post double. And you're gonna do that all the way around. You'll join it with a slip stitch and then you'll do rounds number 26 and 27 the same way. So do three of these rounds 25, 26 and 27 all the same way and just keep those ribs consistent as you go. Okay I just finished up two round number 27. So I'm going to take off this hook and replace it with the smaller hook which is a size I, five and a half millimeter. So now all I'm just going to do is just chain up one and apply one single crochet in each going all the way around for round number 28 and then 29 we're gonna do a reverse single crochet and that'll happen in just a moment. So please do this all the way around first and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm just coming up to the end of this round number 28 and slip stitch and now we're going to start number 29 in just a moment which is the last round. In number 29 we're gonna do a reverse single crochet. So just chain up one and single crochet in the first one but do not advance to the next one. Go backward. So you're gonna come into the stitch just before it and wrap the hook and scoop it and then pull through two and then go to the one before it, scoop it, and pull through two and after two or three of these you can see how it will look. It's key on how you finish this particular kind of round and so I will see you back here in just a moment when you get all the way around and I'll show you how to fasten it off to keep the consistency of this reverse single crochet. This is also known as the crab stitch. I'll be right back in just a moment. When you get all the way around this is the last one that you wanna fill in but before you do anything further I need you to fasten this off. So let's just trim this yarn just enough so that we can get this through a tapestry needle. The trick is is on this uh, reverse single crochet in order to keep it looking consistent you have to just join it carefully. So I'm gonna turn it to the inside so I can see it and I wanna just stay towards the inside of this stitch work so and, and it's more critically important in this particular one because the coloring is slightly different on the other side because of the transition. And when you pull it, pull it so it appears to be the equal distance and then going in the opposite direction again staying on this side of the work, the inside and then pulling it one more time through the opposite side and if you pull it back and forth three times like that it should never fall out on you and therefore you're good to go. So you will have one line here. This was the 
the actual slip stitch line but it's actually really well hidden in this particular one and this is what it looks like at the end. So regardless if you like it to be like a solid color or even a fun color, either way you're good to go and these hats are a winner each way. So have a good day and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.